Good day. I just wanted to take a couple minutes to show you what your BC3300 will look like when it arrives and you pull the top of the crate off. You can see here the unit is uh, pretty simple to assemble. Aside from a fan that goes on the chaff unit, uh, you have the main unit of the roaster and our fairly good sized chaff unit. So we're going to show you how you can connect it. Okay, we had a couple issues with our studio lighting, but we're ready to go unpack the BC3300 and show you how simple it is to set up and start uh, operating. Okay, as you can see, uh, our unit is unpacked. You see the parts right here. There's a few parts that will be in your cooling tray. You'll have the hopper, which is a real simple attachment right on top here with just a hexagonal screw. And you'll also get the USB cord for the profiling, which we'll have a separate video on that later. We recommend generally that you get used to the machine for a couple weeks before you start your profiling. And we also give you a couple of uh, uh, attachments to uh, tighten down your uh, uh, pipes. Now with that comes a couple of really inexpensive flexible tubing that uh, you'll clamp on to the machine and to the chaff unit as well as the cooling tray uh, and then you'll uh, pipe them out the building either through a permanent piping or however you choose to do. We recommend that you immediately after testing your unit buy permanent piping or, because that temporary uh, flexible piping is only good for a month or so and then has to be replaced after a time that's going to get expensive. Whereas the permanent piping is not that expensive you don't have to use the two uh, double insulated piping. I do recommend if you do go through a wall that you use insulation for that. And we have other videos that show you how to do a typical install. So I'm going to put set this up and I'm going to show you a few things about it. I did want to show you this on the uh, chaff unit. The chaff unit for the BC3300 has the area where you would open up to clean out your chaff after your day of roast or after several roasts, um, wet dry vac, suck that right out, or a, a uh, paintbrush. You also have this additional access point so you can do additional cleaning if necessary uh, right there. You're going to get a three inch uh, exhaust pipe so you can either run a three inch permanent pipe out there or you can purchase a three to four inch adapter, run it into uh, your piping, double insulated or however you choose, and uh, run it like that. Today we're just going to do the temporary setting with the included uh, flexible piping. And even if you do buy our toolkit, you will not get a uh, screwdriver. But we know that most of you don't have a problem with coming up with a screwdriver. So you just slide that on there clamp it down, and then hook it to your chaff unit. So. As you can see, I hooked up the temporary piping to the exhaust from the unit, and it goes over into the uh, chaff unit. You may notice I've got laying down there some fabric to protect the top of the housing so that we don't accidentally scratch it when we install it. I recommend you do that, whether it be a few pieces of newspaper, some cardboard. The reason I use this particular fabric is to show you that uh, this is the fabric that we use. It's an insulation when we run piping through the wall. So anytime you uh, decide to run piping through the wall, definitely use a proof heat insulation at that point. Just wanted to show you how simple it is to hook up the fan the fan just sits right on top of the chaff unit. It doesn't have to be tightened down. Uh, it's pretty secure there. The cord to the fan is a little plug-in that goes right into the side of the unit and then is tightened down with the screw. And then from there you hook up a pipe that will exhaust outside the building. This is where most of your smoke for your entire roast is going to be coming through. So you want it nice and secure and you want this exiting the building. I just wanted to talk to you a little bit about the uh, power source. You got your uh, three-prong plug that's made for uh, Asia and Europe that comes with the gas and 
LPG units, the reason why we leave those on there is because we want you to be able to utilize 110 power. So we've put together a nice free offer for you of a uh, step up, step down voltage converter. This allows you to plug in 220 only on the gas and LPG models because the wattage is lower. It allows you to plug into any 110 outlet, which makes the versatility of using any of our gas or LPG roasters very convenient. It saves you about $500 on running a dedicated line and circuit breaker. Uh, now on our electric, you'll need to run that dedicated line because the cost of uh, a voltage converter for that much uh, wattage is more, exceeds the price of having a dedicated line ran. Uh, so anyway, you just simply plug this in. With these units, you make sure that it's set on 110, which is the power source that you're getting uh, that's going into the regulator. And then you plug this in very simply into the international plug which allows American plugs as well as uh, international plugs. Then you turn the unit on and you're ready to start up your roaster. One of the first things you want to do when you set up a roaster before you actually roast is test all of the uh, buttons. You want to make sure they're all off. Everything's turned down but then you want to test them one by one. So you turn on the power source right here. You let the uh, temperature gauges all run up to speed, which only takes a second with the ohm runs. You got your hot air temperature right here, which is the air running through the drum. You've got your bean temperature. The probe is right in with the beans. And then you've got your timer, which you can start from this button as well as stop from that button, you need to reset it right up here. So when you hit the heating button, that's where it turns on the uh, electronic igniter and tries to ignite it. As you'll listen here, it wouldn't ignite because I don't have any gas hooked up right now and I don't have uh, uh, the line turned on anyway. But we've already seen the timer, works perfect. And the timer is set for 80 minutes. You'll never have an 80 minute roast, but that way it it never shuts off during the roast, and nor does it shut off the cycle of the unit. So we can reset that. This is for the cooling. You can hear the powerful motor that runs uh, through the cooling tray, sucking the hot air out. Within a couple minutes, your roast is cooled. And then the mixing, which is the arms circulating around the drum or the pulley tray to uh, stir things up and get that roast nice and uh, cool real quick. So in a moment we'll hook up some LPG and we'll go through the cycle and see how it all works for you. One control I forgot to tell you about was the uh, drum speed control which you can see right here when you turn on the unit and it powers up you flip the switch to on and then you can adjust the drum speed. All of our BC models have this. Our newer Arizonas are getting them and they're an excellent tool for fine-tuning your uh, mellow coffee during the roast. So you want to turn that off when you're done, power everything down. When hooking up your fuel line, we are giving everyone that's a gas or LP, well, an LPG customer, we're giving them one of these high pressure LPG lines. So the gas, if you go with the natural gas, you'll have to get your own regulator and you'll have to have it done by a certified uh, professional to give you the regulator, set up the, uh, the gas lines and test it for no leaks. But simply put, if you're hooking these up yourself, you run a little piece of the uh, propane tape, just one loop around it, and that seals off any potential for leaks at any seal. These just screw right on. Of course, you'll want to tighten them with a wrench, and then your, uh, your uh, machine hooks into this regulator. This regulator is one that you can adjust, so when you go to turn it on, when you do your rows, don't turn it past about a quarter quarter turn 
And the nice thing about the BCs is you got an adjustment both here as well as on the unit itself to make sure that your KPA stays between and generally between two and four. As you can see, we've hooked in the line. Always test for leaks with soapy water before you uh, power up the machine and you'll be ready to go. Okay, we've got the fuel line hooked up. We've turned it on here at the machine and now we power up the machine. It's still turned on with gas going into the line. I hit the heating button, which is the igniter. You can hear it, I'll turn up this and you'll hear that it's flamed up and turned right on. Now, okay, and now you can see that your KPA is between two and four. We're gonna crank it on to about three right now as we watch the machine begin to heat up. And you got your hot air temperature right here, your bean temperature there, and here's your airflow. As you can hear, it's running the air through the, the drum. The, Gas and LPG drums are solid except for on the sides and the air runs through the side, out the exhaust to the chaff. Generally when you start a roast, you have your airflow turned way down because you want that heat to climb very quick. You turn this up between, you know, maybe three and four. You get it up to your temperature, your preheat temperature, you drop the beans then uh, the temperature drops dramatically, 150 to 200 degrees, and then after a moment or so it starts to climb again, and then uh, you begin to use your airflow. Some people right after they drop the beans will start the airflow at maybe 10%, maybe up to 20%, and then when the unit uh, it starts to get up past the preheat temperature, which for me is about 350 Fahrenheit, for some people it's as low as 320, Brothers 370, 380, whatever yours is. Uh, obviously, you don't want to let it go up to 370 or 380 before you start upping the airflow because you're going to start getting the first crack. And so, after a couple minutes, you, you may adjust your airflow up to 50. Uh, depending on how long you want the roast to go, your two main controls to uh, adjust the temperature are your amount of fuel going in here, which adjusts the KPA which you want to keep between two and four, and then also your airflow will play a huge part in the, uh, how quickly your temperature rises. Generally, you want a fairly rapid rise on bean temperature uh, until you get up into the preheat, and then kind of level off into the first crack, and then uh, you really don't need to extend your roast past about 12 to 15 minutes. Uh, a lot of control has to do with uh, the drum speed, once you get up into that first crack, adjusting the drum speed as the beans become much lighter will play a part in the flavors of your, the nuances of your beans. So there's a lot of things to take into consideration. It's really pretty simple to use these machines. And of course, you're going to be using sight and sound after you drop the beans, using your uh, sample spoon as well as the window and also uh, your sense of smell, and some even use a sense of taste as they drop sample beans every uh, half minute after first crack or every 15 seconds. So there you go, it's a very simple process. You're really gonna enjoy roasting with these machines. They're very simple to use, and after you get used to one for a couple weeks, I encourage you to plug them in using the free uh, Artisan open source software, and you're gonna begin profiling roasts and repeating them over and over. One last thing, you can look down into the uh, window here. These do unscrew so you can pop it open. Really no need to during the roast, but you can look in and watch your uh, flame and, and, and see it that way so you got a visual on it. But remember, your main controls during the roast are your airflow. As airflow ultimately becomes about 70% of that heat source for heating your uh, beans, that convective heat source. And then, of course, the power of your gas, which you want to keep in general between 2 and 4 kPa on this machine. So you're really going to enjoy this roaster. All of our roasters roast about the same. The Arizona, same kind of controls. The BC models, as well as the Sedona. Uh, the main differences between the Sedona and the Arizona right now, where we have the uh, 
the variable speed drum, the two ohm rod temperature control, whereas the Arizona has the uh, mechanical one for the hot air. This one has the digital. And then, of course, this has the USB profile. And pretty soon, the Arizona will have all that as well. I hope you enjoy roasting. You're really going to have a lot of fun with it. And it's really a profitable business. So thank you for taking time to watch this video.